Hello! In this video, I'll demonstrate on a practical example how to perform consolidation of two companies with different functional currencies. So yes, foreign currency will be involved under IFRS. I am Sylvia of cpdbox.com and for more articles, examples, Q&As and other similar stuff, please visit my website. That's all about IFRS. Now let me read a case. Mami Corporation, established in the United Kingdom with functional currency of British pounds, acquired a German subsidiary Baby Limited, functional currency Euro, on 1st January 2000X1, when the retained earnings of Baby amounted to 4,000 Euro. On 30th November 2000X2, Mami purchased goods from Baby for 5,000 Euros. Mummy sold these goods to external customers by the year end, but its payable to baby remained unpaid. Prepare consolidated statement of financial position as at 31st December 2000X2. And then we have further information in tabular form. So we have a table of exchange rates, British pound to euro at different dates. And even we have some average rates for the individual years. And then we have statements of financial position, balance sheets of both mummy and baby. And then we also do have statements of profit or loss of both companies. So I named them mummy and baby on purpose for you to remember who is a parent and who the subsidiary is, right? And let's take a closer look. As you can see, statements of mummy are stated in British pounds and statements of baby are stated in euros. And that implies that we will have to translate at least one of them to the presentation currency, because you cannot really add up balances in euros and British pounds. That would be nonsense and you know it. So let's say that the presentation currency here will be British pound, which is a functional currency of mummy. So we will only translate baby statements to British pounds. Well, the presentation currency can be anything that presenter chooses, but let's keep it simple here. The second thing is that there was an intragroup purchase of some goods from baby by mummy, but the goods were sold by the year end, which is great because we do not need an adjustment for unrealized profit. All profit is realized because the goods left the group. However, we have unpaid payable of mummy to baby at the year end, so we will have to eliminate it in the consolidation process. But first, let's translate baby to British pounds. We have a bunch of exchange rates here at different dates, and so let's see what IS21 says about translating balances to presentation currency. Here, the very important fact is whether the foreign operations functional currency is in hyperinflationary economy or not. So let's deal with our case when it's not hyperinflationary. Well, at least not at the time of publishing this video, right? Who knows what happens? Again, it depends on what items we're translating. All assets and liabilities, including goodwill and fair value adjustments, are translated using the closing rate at the date of the financial statements. Yeah, that might sound strange, as you always heard that you should use historical rate for property, plan and equipment, but just remember what you're doing. We are translating the whole balance sheet to presentation currency. We are not translating individual items to the functional currency. If that's not clear enough, please watch our video with summary of IS21 here. Income and expenses are translated by the transaction or historical rate, but it can be impractical to translate each transaction separately, so the average period rates can be used. In relation to equity items like share capital, share premium and other items, IAS 21 is silent and the rates to use are not specified here. The most appropriate seems using historical rates, but I have seen the usage of closing rates too. Anyway, it does not have any impact on the overall equity. Why? 
because all resulting exchange rate differences shall be presented in equity as a separate component called CTD or currency translation difference or in some other way as appropriate. Anyway, in this example, I will tell you exactly what I am using and why. You can use otherwise, but please, please be absolutely consistent. Now, the last point, when there is a currency of hyperinflationary economy involved, then you should firstly restate the financial statements in line with IS-29, which is financial reporting in a hyperinflationary economy, and only then apply the same procedures as described, but we're not going to apply that here. So let's work. We have this nice balance sheet in a very simple format without subtotals to make it just totally simple. The first thing you want to do here before we start consolidating these two balance sheet is, as I already said, translate baby's balance sheet to British pounds and we're going to select which rates to apply. So with assets, it's very easy. You simply apply the closing rate, as we explained earlier in the requirements of IS-21. And here I do recommend splitting the trade receivables of BABY into two parts, outside the group and intra-group, because it will be easier to eliminate. However, both of them are translated using the closing rate, okay? Now let's take a look at equity and liabilities and let's do liabilities first because they are easier. And so we have bank loans and trade payables in baby's accounts. They don't look like intra-group, so we just put closing rates here. Here also I recommend splitting mummy's payables into intra-group and outside the group to make it easier to eliminate. So the question said that there was an unpaid balance of 5,000 euros to baby, but mommy reports in British pounds. And so we may reasonably assume that mommy has already recalculated all foreign currency balances with the closing rate as required by IS-21 rules for translating into functional currency this time. Careful about that. So these 5,000 euros are shown in British pounds as 4281 translated by the year and rate. Now you may say, but mommy would show some foreign exchange gain or loss on that payable because it changed over time. And as it is within the group, it should have no impact on profit or loss, right? At least not on consolidated profit or loss. Well, that's not true because this is the effect of international trading and it will almost never be zero, right? Even in the consolidated financial statements. But let's get back. The remaining balance of the mummies payable must be outside the group. But back to baby. So equity. This is the hard part because as I've said, IES 21 is silent about it. And yes, there was a proposal to translate the equity items at the closing rate, but it was not included in the standard. And so it means that in most cases, companies decide whether they apply closing rate or historical rate. But again, they need to be consistent. Consistent. So here, let me describe my preferred method although I saw the other methods too. I prefer to split equity items and analyze them according to the moment when they arose. So let's go one by one. Share capital. To me, the most appropriate seems to apply the historical rate applicable at the date of acquisition of subsidiary by the parent. So this would be 1st January 2X1 and not historical rate applicable when the share capital was issued. You will thank me for that a bit later because you will see it will make it easy at consolidation. Then we have retained earnings of 31,000 euros. Now, not surprisingly, we will split the retained earnings into a few parts according to the moment when they arose, the same principle as with share capital and other items. So the first part of 4,000 euros were pre-acquisition retained earnings. 
what it means. Baby was running a company when mommy acquired it on 1st January 2X1 and mommy effectively purchased this part. And therefore we need to translate this part with the same exchange rate as applied to share capital because this part will be eliminated later and normally it enters into goodwill calculation. Again, go back to basics if you're not familiar with that. If you remember, acquisition happened in the beginning of the year 2OX1 and so retained earnings of baby must have increased by the profit for 2OX1 and the profit for 2OX2. By how much? Well, let's work with what we have. So here we have the profit or loss statement for 2OX2 and we can see the profit of baby for 2OX2 amounts to 15,000 euros. So we can bring this up here. And the remaining part of 31,000 less 4,000 less 15,000 must be the profit for 2OX1. And this equals to 12,000. Now how to translate these two parts? Well, I recommend for the sake of keeping the equity consistent to translate profit or loss items first and then bring the resulting amount to the balance sheet. It's all about the consistency and presentation because the amounts will not be obfuscated or hidden by the foreign exchange differences that much. Okay, so we do not have a profit or loss statement for baby for the year 2OX1. So let's just assume that all the items were translated with the average rate as a reasonable approximation. So we simply use the average for 2OX1. In reality, I do recommend simply taking the foreign currency balance of 2OX1 profit in here. For 2OX2, however, let's analyze. You should normally use the transaction date rate, if possible, but you can use average rate as the approximation. Again, my recommendation is to apply transaction date rates to all intragroup transactions, especially if they are rare, one-off, big, etc., because it will be clean and easy to eliminate them. Of course, this is not always possible, especially when there are loads of daily intragroup transactions occurring. So you would use the average unless you have some system in place. But let me use the transaction date rates now. Again, be reasonable here and use transaction dates for any material transactions. To the remaining items, we apply average of 2OX2. And so Let's translate baby's balances from Euro to British Pounds using the rates that we selected. Skip profit for 2OX2 and do the profit or loss first. Right, so baby's profit is 12,451 British Pounds and we can take it in the balance sheet up there. Fine. Now. What can you see? Baby's assets in British pounds are not equal to baby's liabilities and equity. Of course they are not. You use different rates to translate. So this difference is called currency translation difference or CTD and it is a part of equity and actually you can calculate exactly where this came from. Here in this case it is quite material, significant over 9,000 British pounds, but not surprisingly, just look at the volatility of exchange rates of British pound to Euro, and you see that British pound went down significantly against Euro in 2OX2. And let me tell you a secret now, these rates are real. I took them from 2015 and 2016, and guess what happened in 2016? Yes, Brexit referendum where British people voted out of European Union and as a result of that decision, British pound weakened quite significantly. This graph is not ideal because it shows the rate euro to GBP, 
not GBP to Euro. And this is why you can see the different rates inside of this table. But I selected this period on purpose to show you how the group can benefit from movements in foreign currencies over time just by owning a foreign currency asset, a subsidiary this time. Well, the things can go the opposite way too. Just be careful about that. So from now on, you're all set and you can continue with basic consolidation procedures that will be fairly easy this time since there will be no goodwill, no non-controlling interest, simple consolidation. So first you need to combine mummies and babies balances, both in British pounds this time. Then we will perform the elimination entry to get rid of mummy's investment in baby on one side and baby's share capital and pre-acquisition profits on the other side. And you can see that it's fairly easy thanks to using the historical rates at the date when mummy acquired baby because that's also the rate at which mummy recognized its investment in its own financial statements. We also need to eliminate intragroup balances, the receivable of baby with payable of mummy. And here we will focus only on the balance sheet. We are not consolidating statement of profit or loss. But if you are, you also need to eliminate intragroup balances, their revenues and cost of sales, and eventually make an adjustment of unrealized profit, but not this time. Finally, add up the numbers of steps one to three and you're done. You can play around with some numbers to show nice numbers, subtotals or whatever you need to do, but you are done with the basic consolidated statement of financial position in foreign currencies. This file will be available on my website too. So this is it, the absolutely basic example of consolidation when foreign currencies are involved. And for more videos, lectures like this, please check out cpdbox.com, sign up for your free newsletter, like this video if it helped somehow, like this channel, sign up, share with your friends, because remember, sharing is caring. Thank you for watching. Bye.